In this lesson, we're going to demonstrate how you can import media into your project from CDs and DVDs. As you're working on your projects, there may be the odd time where you need to uh, access material that has been stored only on a DVD or a CD. There might be some music that a client gives you that they have licensed, and they say, we need you to put this into our video. And so we're going to demonstrate how you can do that. Now, of course, there are a number of ways that you can rip material off DVDs and CDs. And if you do it that way, using one of the methods that you have used in the past, and that material uh, is already on a hard drive somewhere, well, then, of course, you could simply access it using your Add Clip button. You could uh, navigate to that place on your hard drives where you stored that material and just import it that way. However, if you've just been handed a CD or a DVD and uh, asked to bring it in uh, for editing purposes, well, you can do that uh, with the Source Browser tool. Just click over on your tabs there and open up the Source Browser. You'll see that your CD and DVD drive shows up there. Um, some computers may even have a a Blu-ray disc available here and in that case that probably would show up as well and you would be able to access material on the Blu-ray disc. Uh, some laptops may not even have a CD or DVD these days. A lot of them are, are, are coming shipping now without that and then it would in that case not show up here. You would have to plug in a, an external CD or DVD drive, uh, probably through a USB connection. So, in, you know, if that is the case, uh, you have one of these new laptops with no CD or DVD drive, you might have to actually, um, you know, take that to a, a separate computer, rip them, save them to an external hard drive, and, uh, you know, import them into your project using your bin window add to clip. However, if you do have a CD, DVD drive attached to your computer, all going well, it should show up here in the source browser. So what I'm going to do is insert a CD and see what happens. Windows will probably pop up with a little window asking, do you want to play that CD that you just inserted? Well, let's just close out of that. And now let's point to the audio CD that shows up there, and you will get a a representation of all of the tracks that are on that CD. It looks like we have 11 music tracks. And uh, by default, they're just showing up as an audio waveform thumbnail. If you wanted to see this in a little different way, you could change the view. Maybe uh, let's uh, take it down to detail small. Uh, maybe try detail large. See if we can get a little larger text there. We see the track number represented, 1, 2, 3 through 11. Uh, the start time on the CD, the size of the file. And if you wanted to, if we right click on any one of these, we could actually play or sample the music. And uh, then once you've heard enough of it, you can hit the stop button. Uh, you probably already know the um, tracks that you might want to import into the project. So then, you know, uh, just using your control key, you could select those. Let's say we want one and three and six. And once you have selected the tracks that you want to bring in, you can go up to the icon menu strip here and select the last one that shows up there, add and transfer to bin and EDIUS will start the process of ripping those music tracks, saving them to your project folder, and bringing them into your bin. We'll just uh, put you on pause while this uh, finishes up that little process. All right, uh, the process has completed. We now have these three tracks. Uh, if we go over to our bin window, we see that they're showing up uh, right at the very bottom of the last bin uh, window that we had open, which at this point is just the root folder. Now, usually what uh, we would want to do is create a separate folder to place these music clips into. And uh, so you can do that just by right-clicking on the root 
folder and choose new folder and let's call it music. Now yeah, we might want to create a subfolder to keep these particular music tracks separate. <clears throat> and you can do that just by right clicking on any folder. You can create a subfolder and just click into it if you want to rename it. And let's call it music from CDs. And uh, then we can go back to our root folder, uh, find those three pieces of music, select them all, and then we can just drag them into the folder uh, that we have just created, music from CDs. And there they are in the music from CDs folder. Well, you might be wondering, what, where were those audio files saved? How can I access them? How can I find out where they are saved? Well, if you notice the little blue um, square here, that indicates that they are being saved inside of our project folder. If we were to go to our project folder, um, Edius Projects, Myanmar, and go to the transferred folder that we talked about in our last tutorial, we see that uh, here they are showing up uh, in a folder by themselves, audio, CD, DVD, and the three music tracks that we just imported are showing up there. And by default, EDIUS assigns its uh, own name to these files. If we were to look at these, uh, let's maybe select uh, detailed text. If we were to open this up, we could see that the full file name uh, is just a bunch of numbers. But if we look at them a little bit more carefully, we see that there is some rhyme and reason to these numbers. It's really based on the date and time that they were captured uh, or imported. However, you're not stuck uh, with using these names. As you're working on your edit and you use these audio files, you may want to create uh, your own unique name for these audio files so that you can uh, remember where they come from, which CD and that type of thing. So as you look at them on your timeline, rather than just seeing a bunch of numbers here, if you rename them, the name that you give them will now be reflected uh, in the audio clip as you use it on your timeline. And you might be able to relate to it uh, better that way than it being just a lot of numbers that look very similar to each other. Okay, um, one thing I might point out with uh, ripping audio uh, from um, uh, CDs, you need to be careful if you're living in a country that uh, <clears throat> in most uh, developed countries have very strict copyright uh, laws in place for music and there are watchdogs out there that look for people who are violating these copyright laws and if you use this video that you're creating in a commercial way and uh, for a client especially and you're using copyrighted music that has not been licensed either by yourself or by your client well you can get into a lot of trouble. You can have huge fines or your client could have huge fines by using music that has not been appropriately licensed by either yourself or your client. Uh, some of the fines can get up to $100,000. So just a word to the wise, you need to be uh, careful how you use uh, copyrighted music. Uh, even on YouTube, um, they have some type of a, a device that listens to everything that you submit uh, to them, um, some kind of computer software that analyzes the music that's in the background. And if they recognize that that music is copyrighted, then they're going to send you an alert um, and let you know that you are attempting to use copyrighted material in the video that you uploaded. What they might do is send you an email or um, on your account let you know that, okay, we, we discovered that you're using copyrighted music in your video. That's okay. We're going to let you go ahead and do that. Just know that you are not going to be able to receive any revenue. You're not going to be able to monetize this video uh, as long as you have this copyrighted music in it. And what we'll do is use a portion of the money that may be generated by the advertising from your video and send that to the appropriate uh, 
organization that gives revenue checks to the artists and the specific artists that you might have used in your copyrighted material. You've probably maybe even seen one of these uh, notifications on your YouTube account. Or YouTube might just up and say, you're using copyrighted material. If you don't take it off, put a flag on your account and you might even lose your channel. So you need to be careful how you use copyrighted material. You might say, oh, we're just going to use it at our church. Is it that big of a deal? Well, actually, yes, churches can be fined uh, as well by these watchdog organizations. And I'm pretty sure that your pastor or priest is not going to be very happy with you if uh, they get a big fine because you have used some copyrighted material. So just be careful how you work with these uh, files that you rip from uh, copyrighted music CDs. Okay, well, what about uh, DVDs? Well, um, let's see what we can do here. I understand that there is uh, some problem uh, with the release of version 7 uh, about importing DVDs. Um, there used to be, under settings, system settings, if we went to importer exporter and went to the audio CD DVD setting, under DVD video settings there used to be an option <clears throat> that said reconstruct file. This is missing in version 7 and uh, I understand there are currently some problems ripping DVDs using the source browser, but let's give it a try and see what happens. Let's uh, pop in a DVD with our source browser open and uh, what often will happen is Windows will attempt to um, play the DVD because it might have an auto start uh, Windows might go ahead and start to play that but just close out of that and then uh, point to the drive itself we see that the name of the CD or DVD comes up just as we named it and all of our programs are showing up and as we examine these in the source browser, we see that uh, we have each track listed here. And under time, it gives us the length of each of these programs, how large uh, a file size they are. Uh, let's just maybe point to one or two of these smaller programs. Maybe we can bring in this one as well go up to our icon up here that says add and transfer to bin and that starts the process of ripping these programs off of our DVD and you can watch the progress there. Um, if you happen to be in the view mode of thumbnails you won't actually see the progress here um, and so if you would like to follow along with the progress there it's better to have it down here at detailed text. Another way that you can watch the progress of uh, any process in the source browser is to go up and find the icon that says show background job. And if you open up that window, you, you can kind of keep an eye on the running process there uh, to see what percentage you're at. And that kind of gives you a, a clue as to whether or not you have time to go run, do some errands. But since we just uh, chose some very short programs here, this shouldn't take that long. All right, uh, we're finished up here. Let's check these out. Uh, they should come to our bin automatically. Let's go over to our bin window just by clicking on the bin tab over here. And here they are showing up here. Should be three of them. And let's uh, open up one of these and see what we got. Well, <laughs> we see that there is only one frame here. Let's drag it to the timeline. And sure enough, we only have one frame. Let's uh, check out the properties of this video. Uh, you can check out um, information about any clip by just right-clicking on the clip itself and go down to Properties or use the Alt-Enter keyboard shortcut. And that opens up a Properties dialog box. If we go to File Info over here on this tab, we see that... You know, our size is 119 megabytes. Uh, there's no real reason why this should only be one frame. We see the container is an MPEG-2 program stream. Let's maybe take a look at it uh, on our hard drive. We can tell where it was saved up here by checking the path. 
we see that it was saved to our project folder again, uh, showing up now in the transferred bin. So we could go take a look at these files in our actual project folder. Let's go over there, Edius Projects Myanmar transferred, and uh, they will be showing up here, I imagine, under the audio CD DVD. Here's our three music files that we brought in earlier, and here are our video clips that we just attempted to bring in. It's uh, using an M2P file extension, which is a little bit strange. If we try and play these in Windows, it says that Windows can't open this file. Sometimes um, all you need to do is rename the file extension, and that will make a difference. Let's try MPG. And Windows will always give you this warning. If you change a file extension, it might be a come unusable. Well, it's encouraging. We now see an icon, and uh, we see that we can actually play the video now. It's not... Who grow up in an environment of war. Let's maybe now go back to Edius. We see that the original file has dropped offline because we changed the file name itself. We can just delete that and maybe now uh, import this again. See what that does. Well, <laughs> that didn't work either. We, Even though Windows will play it, uh, Edius won't. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I'm kind of stumped. best that I could recommend uh, at this point, then, is to use some other method to import your DVD programs for now, there are a lot of free programs that you can get on the internet uh, that will allow you to rip programs off a DVD and then you can import those. And just know that uh, currently uh, the version that we are working with right now on EDIA 7 is version 7.21.1530. And uh, I checked into this at the user forum at EDIUS and uh, it is an issue that has been reported to Edius, and so I am guessing that uh, perhaps in the next release this little bug will be addressed. And then, uh, if you have updated your software, the procedure that we showed you using the source browser uh, should produce better results. So even though it might not work today, <laughs> uh, by the time you watch this video it might actually work. So don't be discouraged by the fact that we were not able to get more than one frame of video, uh, it may indeed work for you as you attempt to do this using the source browser. And once I uh, hear that this little bug has been squashed, I will make a note of that uh, here um, under the information associated with this video tutorial so that uh, you'll be aware that that has been resolved. But for now, I believe that that does it for importing media from CDs and DVDs using the source browser.